The nickels struck in the 1960s were known as Jefferson nickels. Individual coins can vary hugely in value. So just how much could a top quality coin be worth? That's what we're going to find out. We'll explore one particular mintage, the 1965 nickel value. We'll dig into what separates a standard coin from something that's rare and valuable. And we'll take a look at the history and design of the Jefferson nickel along the way. Dot .1965 marks the first date of the series known to coin collectors as the modern original design, Jefferson nickel. Earlier nickels are known as vintage, but there's no real difference between them. The distinction simply ties in with the date when the treasury removed silver from dimes, quarters, and half dollars. The 1965 nickel has the same design on both sides as the earliest Jefferson nickels, which were struck in 1938. The coins get their nickname from the obverse, which carries the portrait of the former president, Thomas Jefferson. The Jefferson nickel was a replacement for the coin known as the Buffalo nickel. That had proven difficult to strike successfully and was retired after 25 years. That was the earliest the mint could cease producing a coin design without seeking congressional approval. The new nickel was designed by a German-born sculptor by the name of Felix Schlag. Schlag had served in the German army in the First World War, but emigrated to the USA in 1929. The first Jefferson nickels didn't have Schlag's signature. This was unusual, and in 1966, the U.S. Mint gave the artist the opportunity to remedy the situation. His initials were placed on the obverse, at the base of Jefferson's portrait. They remained there until 2005, when the image was replaced with a portrait of Jefferson in three-quarters profile. At first, Jefferson nickels were produced by the Mint facilities at Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco, but in 1965, all nickels came out of Philadelphia. There were no proof nickels that year either. But the Mint did produce special strikes coins that could be purchased alongside other denominations in special mint sets. These two were struck in Philadelphia. Dot Jefferson nickels are still being struck to this day. The portrait used for today's versions is by Jamie Frankie. Dot coin collectors call the heads side of a coin its obverse. The obverse of the 1965 nickel has the portrait of Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was one of the founding fathers and president of the USA from 1801 to 1809. The Mint ran a competition to seek designs for the coin. The winner was a German artist called Felix Schlag. His portrait depicts Jefferson in profile, facing to the left as the coin is viewed, and wearing a slight smile. Schlag's Jefferson looks very similar to a bust of the former president by the French artist Jean-Antoine Houdon. You can take a look at the original sculpture if you visit the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. To the left of the portrait is inscribed the motto, In God We Trust. The words curve to run parallel to the edge of the coin, facing Jefferson. To the right of the portrait is the word Liberty and the date, a standard 1965 nickel-graded MS-60, the lowest grade for mint state coins, is worth around a dollar. That rises to $15 at MS-65, the lowest level at which a coin is considered to be in gem condition. The most valuable standard 1965 nickels are graded MS-67. The PCGs has certified nine coins at that level and values them each at $2,000. If you want a 1965 nickel with the full step designation, you'll have a smaller choice. Full step coins have been certified only at grades MS-63 to MS-66. At the lower end of that scale, an MS-63 example is valued by the PCGS at $250. That jumps to $2,000 for a coin graded MS-64 and to $10,000 for the sole example graded MS-65. 